I'm Reverend Phil, and I'm your host for Words of the Prophets. Where are our prophets now? Where are those messengers God chooses to communicate divine revelation through? In the past, the Creator has sent prophets like Abraham, Siddhartha, Jesus, Muhammad, and many more. Maybe our higher power has switched tactics since we reinterpret God's words as soon as the Creator's prophets leave us. Could it be that Spirit talks to each one of us individually and we haven't learned to listen? On Words of the Prophets, our modern prophets show us how to find the internal prophet that is the I Am, and we discuss the application of spiritual principles in all aspects of our lives. Love and light, everybody. I'm Reverend Phil, and I'm your host for Words of the Prophet. Today, my guest is Diane Camillo. Hi there. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. She's a special guest. She came all the way up from Albuquerque to spend an hour with us, so we thank you for that. Thank you. Diane is a holistic health practitioner, and she is involved with more modalities than I've ever seen anybody. We're going to start talking about what that all means and how that all works together because it's just beautiful. Today's prophetic topic is the fruit of the Spirit, and this phrase comes from the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Galatians, the King James Version, uh, chapter 5, verse 22, and that, I think I grabbed that off your website, you right? You did. Yes. Uh, so the verse reads as follows, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. And we're going to talk about the fruits of the Spirit, because that's what the healing is all about, but... Even before we get into that, you have a fascinating story. Thank you. So let's try to condense it down a little bit, but keep it fascinating. And how did you? What got you to be a health holistic health practitioner and get into all these modalities and all these other things we're going to talk on? Well, thank you. Um, actually, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, was a curandera. And for people who have all kinds of images about what they believe a curandera is. Actually, it is simply a Spanish folk healer. And she had a real art of working with herbs, medicinal herbs, as tinctures, salves, poultices, etc. Whenever any of us children were ill, I come from a very large family. My father uh, had a very large Italian family, that's the name Camillo, and my mother is Hispanic. My mother's the baby of 10. I really do have. 100 first cousins. Wow. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, my grandmother taught, I watched her, I watched her and her practice of medicine for healing everybody. And so it was something that always stuck with me. I lost her when I was 18, but when I became a parent, it was often what I did with my children. If they had little sniffles or aches or pains, I always turned to holistic remedies that I knew of to try. And uh, for 34 years, I went into the construction industry. And when that all ended in 2007, 2008, specifically for me, um, it was trying then to decide what will I do next. And it just became a very organic involvement of, well, what else do I love? Um, I do love the housing industry, but I really do love working with herbs and healing. Do you remember the first healing your grandmother did on you? I do. I was uh, uh, probably five or six. I was having a fever, and she soaked slices of potato and put the sliced potato, they were soaked in vinegar, and she placed those around my head and wrapped my head with cloth and uh, did an alcohol rub down and it broke my fever. As you learn these things from your grandmother, did she actually have explanations as to why these were working or was just about, this no, is what you do for no, this? Yeah, I don't think that, that that ever was necessary. It was just uh, an understanding and a knowing and having complete total confidence that if you didn't feel good, she would make you feel better. It was just the way it was. And she did. How cool and is that? And she did. Yes. It was extremely cool. My grandmother always had on... One side of her home, a flower garden. The other side of her home, a vegetable garden. And the patio area always had um, her medicinal herbal garden. Did she ever exhibit any forms of psychic abilities besides the healing? 
She did, but I think she was extraordinarily afraid of it. I think there are several people in my family right now who are extraordinarily afraid of it. They have visions, they see things, but it's easier for them to say it's a ghost or it's a spirit or it's... Uh, I was always intuitive even as a very young child and I never had fear of it. It was never anything that frightened me in, the, in any way. I always just accepted it that it was. And you didn't feel like you were unusual because you had those experiences? No, the only thing I felt that was unusual is when my grandmother would see spirits, she would get frightened and she was lighting candles and spraying the holy water all over the place and saying prayers. And, um, but in, in a modality of removing it and, and yeah. cleansing it and doing a spiritual cleansing, where now I sort of do an invitation of the spirits. I have a uh, ancient Hopi grandfather who is pretty much a constant spiritual guide, and I have Saint Germain resides very closely with me, as well as um, Katumi. Katumi just showed up about a year or so ago. Do you call on them, or do they just kind of show up? I mean, can you call a specific one, or you just say help and see who shows? They showed up on their own originally, and now if I have a uh, special need or insight on anything, I can call on them. I uh, am also a Reiki master and do Reiki teaching, and I've had clients when we've talked about the energy. I call my house Spirit House and my chapel, Mystic Chapel, due to the frequency and energies of beings that are there. I think at one time we have, it, I think it might even be on the website, I'll have to look, but I have um, like 17 angels, 19 ascended masters. Um, I have a multitude of beings that reside in my chapel. And so one of my Reiki students said, well, I want to call forth somebody right now. So we called forth an angel, and certainly an angel did manifest. There was an apparition. We weren't able to photograph it. I do have 48 photographs of different spirit beings. We weren't able to photograph that for her, but it didn't matter because she did see it and experience it. So the other student, feeling a little dejected at the time, <laughs> said, well, I want to manifest an angel for me. And what happened was this miraculous, beautiful, large cone of violet purple energy. And I said, well, you have St. Germain. He has come present for you. Now that I did, I was able to videograph it on the, the little video that comes with the camera. Uh -huh. And you can see the tunnel of the purple. Uh, that came before her, and so that was pretty magnificent, a magnificent experience for her. Do you find you have people who are afraid of what you do? I don't know if I would use the word afraid or they're just not open and able to completely accept it. They find it all very woo-woo, and that's okay. Um, my own children don't embrace it as much, even though uh, my daughter isn't psychic per se, but two of her children are tremendously, and my son is very much so. In fact, my son has corrected me on where I have thought there were vortexes or energies in the house, and he'll say, oh no, that one's always been there, and that one was there since I was, my son's 33 now. And I'll say, well, since I was two years old, that over there was taking place. And so he's giving me information I didn't tune into before. So, um, but nevertheless, sometimes a lot of the information, a lot of other people in my family consider it woo-woo. And that's okay. That's good. I mean, the reason I asked the question, I, I, we, still, we talked a little bit right before we started rolling here. Um, there are a lot of factors that converged to make me the drug addict I was. One of them was having a couple of gifts. I call them a couple that I, whenever I presented the understandings that I was getting through the gifts, people would look at me like I was crazy. Like, you know, that's not what's happening. You're, you know, you're not in touch with the real world. And, I had other factors that were like telling me the same thing. You knew and it was your truth. I didn't know what it was. Ah. 
I had no idea, Diane. I had no idea what it was. And I like to put this out periodically on the shows because maybe there's somebody who's watching who's had similar experiences. I mean, I just grew up in a basically white middle-class neighborhood in the Bronx, you know, and, and just you didn't hear those things, you know. I mean, so I stuffed it. A lot of stuff came along that, you know, there was a bunch of factors that contributed to make me the drug addict I was. And the gift kind of never went away, but I kept it suppressed. Then when I got clean, it just came right back out again. And at that point, I was provided with people to teach me how to use it, that it was okay to have it, and what it really meant and didn't mean. But that's why people, I ask people about this, because I think people need to hear that it's okay to have these experiences. We're not out of our mind. Right. We're not schizophrenic. We're no. not, you know, exactly. Absolutely not. Yeah. In fact, I find that... Uh, Having the insight that I do makes me a much better healer because I can often tune into people's past lives and their cellular memory. And sometimes people are having symptoms now that have no organic reasoning. So we have to recognize that it's a cellular memory that's tripping up. And if we can go back and do a regression and clear it from that level, it often has great impact on... Uh, cleaning up any residual now. So what we're now talking about is ho obviously a whole lot different than what your grandmother was doing. Yes. How did this evolve? Yes. Um, I've always been intuitive. I had my very first personal past life experience when I was seven years old. My father used to subscribe to Time Life books and back then Every month they would get a different book from a different country and we would look at the, at the book and then there was the little slide projector, those little, um, what are they called? Do you remember those little things? They were on a wheel. Yeah, you, yeah I know. Right. So with the, you hold them up your yeah. arm. Yeah, exactly. So we would look at that and it had, a, if you wanted to get more sophisticated, you could put it on the 8 millimeter, the Kodak thing and, and look at that and the, the projector. Wall. Yeah. But uh, so we were looking at one of Japan. And he turned the page on the book, and as he turned the page on the book, I had an absolute, complete, total, instant recall of living in that village. I knew who my father was then, that my father then was a fisherman, and I told my present father, oh, and we live down the road this way. You had to go this way to get to our home, and the school I went to was over there, and my father was a fisherman, and I just went on and on with this stream of information, and my dad just looked at me like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Child, you got an imagination. <laughs> right, right. But it was very real to me because I recognized instantly, as I was telling the story, smells, uh, m much of it became life again. I could go into that place. So um, that's the first dramatic experience I had with recognition of past life. Did so anybody, I, I mean, real. did you, well, were you self-taught, were teachers provided, combination thereof? Mostly self-taught. I didn't really do any exploration and find any teachers until probably 1990. I, I um, got a divorce in 1989. Prior to that, I was a very um, devout Catholic. My children were in parochial school. I was in that whole thing. and. So what did you leave? Two lives? I mean, you had all these I gifts. Did, and... But yet on the flip side, let's think about that for just a second. If we really look at Catholicism and their appreciation for all the saints, and they had to do something miraculous, I just think that the saints are really another word for psychics of their day. They were the modern mystics of their time. If you really explore yeah. that as a possibility, you can sort of see the correlation. Um, some maybe not, and some will probably say that was a Looney Tune thing to say. But it's my opinion that it is a possibility. Um, but I, I did leave the Catholic Church, and then I went on to study metaphysics and science of mind. And as my conscious awareness expanded, everything else sort of just the flow, the came, flow. Came to you. It did. And I was blessed with a couple of beautiful and wonderful teachers as well that came across my path. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, that is that is such a wonder how that works. I mean, we talked it about is. one of them earlier before we got on the air. And 
I mean, I've had numerous experiences where, you know, one-time deals, sometimes a little bit longer than that. People were put in my path to teach me something, and right. then they were gone. Yeah. You know, and it, at the beginning, I didn't see the pattern. Then after a few, I was like, oh, my God, this is, yeah, like I'm being pointed somewhere. Right. You know, I was just so happy not to be doing drugs and to, <laughs> trying to get a life back, you know. And then these people were just showing up, and, I mean, I, I don't want to take away your time, so I'm not going to get into these stories, but I, I could easily get into these stories, how I got on the radio, how I got to Santa Fe. I mean, it just... Well, I'm going to have you on my radio. I have a blog talk radio program, Divine Intuitive Solutions. I'll have to invite you, so we'll have to invite your viewing audience to tune in okay. to Divine Intuitive Solutions, and we'll just talk about your experiences, because I think they'd be fascinating. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your story. I'd love to. I, lo I mean, to me... I get so charged telling the story because I feel the energy flowing. You know, it, it's not to that that kind of ego, narcissistic kind of thing. It's about sharing the possibilities of what, right. and that's what I'm talking about here. It, 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 we are provided what we need exactly when we need it, and our job is just to leave ourselves open to it. Exactly. You Isn't know? that beautiful? When we finally recognize that it is that easy. I know, but I mean, I, I, I... We can give up the struggle when we finally recognize it is that easy. It took me 26 years of constant drug use. It took me a few years of 12-step recovery before I realized I was my... There's a saying that, you know, if anybody had done to me what I did to myself, I'd have to kill them. <laughs> you know? Right. And it was like, I got to get out of my own way. And that's right. the message we try to... And when I say get out of our own way, the message I try to carry with this show is that... We had to, I, I believe in duality. So yes. the getting out of the way is getting the ego out of the way and letting the spirit shine through. And we will always be guided and given exactly what we need. But this is for you, your show. So Thank me... you. No, I'm enjoying this. This is wonderful. I'm yeah, appreciating it, it, all the information. The sharing it, it, is what it, makes this great. Yeah, and it, it's sharing it with the audience so that they see the possibilities that maybe we talk about an experience that they've had similar. Now, wait a second. Now they're getting normalized as opposed to, oh, I'm some freak and something's wrong in my head because this happened. It's a beautiful awakening, and I really suspect, and I'm going to give my sort of prophetic message for 2012, that more and more of our society is becoming awake, aware, and alert. Their consciousness is opening. So you are really going to be so far more mainstream in the, in the future. You're, I don't know what your demographics are for this program at this time, but I do have a strong sense that it is going to greatly expand because more and more people are going to seek out this information because they're finally waking up. Their consciousness is saying, oh, wow, okay, I can look at something from a different perspective. And when they hear something from a different perspective, it awakens in them a new truth of themselves. And that's really what this whole journey is, is about all of us recognizing our real truth. What is, what is our truth? What is our path? And as journey. you say that, and I agree with what you're saying, but and we may even get to it, it's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> At some you know, point. That you talk about you know, feng shui, and you talk about the yin and the yang. Yes. But as we are creating occult believers, interested parties, we are creating doubters, and we're non-interested parties who are going to resist it equally as much as the people who are going to be drawn to it. Because that's the end of the end. There's, there's, a, there's a balance. Sure, sure. And once we've created one part, we've created both parts. Could be. And I also feel that the yin and the yang is going to be more expressed in the future, not necessarily by those who are naysayers, but by those who are embracing violence, who are embracing hate, fear, dysfunction, disharmony. That really is going to be... Um, where they, where the path that they're choosing. The, the, so we are going to have a duality. That The paradigm shift with everybody else, our frequencies are going to give us more ease, more joy, more better pleasure of this journey. And the others are just going to sort of do their own little... But that's okay. That's their destiny. It's not mine. It is. But, I mean, it, 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 there is going to be a large amount of conflict in the transition because there always is yeah you know and yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. I think it's not only is it. I mean, you're familiar with Edgar Casey. I am very familiar with Edgar Casey. I am the Edgar Casey webmaster for the Albuquerque group. I know that you've visited I've, with had, Dan and Wanda have yeah. been to see you. I'm also the Edgar Casey um, ARE, the Association of Research and Enlightenment webmaster for the Rocky Mountain region. I am a member of uh, ARE and I do use many of the Edgar Casey holistic remedies in my healing. It's all part of the, like you yeah. said, I'm a multitude of modalities because I find that um, each person, each individual may have a different need. And so it's good to have that information, whether it's Hannah Kroger, Edgar Casey, Reiki, uh, Jinshin Jiatsu, Tai Chi, Kijong, uh, whatever. It all works. Feng Shui works medically as well as just having a harmony in your home. We're going to try to touch on all of those. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to just back up to Casey for a second because there was a point I was wanting to make. In his readings on the sequence of destructions of the continent of Atlantis, he had done, at the readings, he started talking about how the souls from that time, those conflicts were coming back again in large numbers to revisit that conflict. Mm -hmm. And that we are in that period of that mm -hmm. conflict, you know, the revision of that conflict. Right, you know, that right. I'm becoming stronger aware now of my Lemurian influence and... Um, I have been told by other well-known psychics, and I think this could be why I've had this whole new surge of, of uh, connection with the Tibetan people, is that I was once a keeper of the crystal skulls in Tibet. So in some ways, all my past lives and journeys have led me. Now I clearly see where it's led me to the attraction of the people and the energy that is coming into my life today. But with the Atlantean theories, there are so many, and I do see exactly what you said. I think that's very real, very true, and very happening. Oh, I believe it's definitely happening. You know, that, that I have a very strong connection to Edgar Casey. So, I mean, I really, his stuff to me resonates at a level higher than any of my other teachers. And ah. I've, I've had some amazing teachers. Great. You know, but I just, from the first moment I met him, I really believe that was the function of my second wife was to introduce me to. Oh, wow. Edgar Casey, But um, I, I've, you know, his stuff just always tied everything together for me, made sense when nothing else was making sense. Oh, good, good. It was actually an Edgar Casey reading that got me clean. I don't remember. I can never find the reading after, but my wife had some literature around the house, my second wife, and I was still heavily into drugs. And he did a reading for somebody that was an alcoholic and basically said, you cannot connect to the God until you stop doing the alcohol because the alcohol clogs the channels. Right. And it was during, my clean date is the harmonic convergence, August 17th, 1987. Jose Aguelas, yes. And I was kind of like connecting to some people who were very heavily involved with us, and I was trying to get what they had, which was that spiritual sense. And, but I was still using. <laughs> so, so you recognize your own disconnect. Yeah, when yeah. I, I got that reading. And, and well, it, again, people put in my path, there was this, this wonderful guy who... He introduced me to 12 steps, introduced me to the whole process, but he was also, he was a recovering alcoholic at the time, and he was in charge of making the sacred fire for the harmonic, for the harmonic convergence, and he asked me to be his assistant. Oh, wow, beautiful. To help him make and maintain the fire, and... That was not by accident. No, and, but, but at that point, to me, it was just like, God, nobody's ever asked me to do anything before except get lost. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it was like, wow. So and I just came to that understanding that if I'm going to do this, I'm going to clean up. Right. And the, the, the reading, his image, they all came together, converged at the same time. And, wow. You know, so what the, a sacred blessing. And so I 
you know, I think I might have stopped a day and a half before the Carmona convergence, but I, I, that, I hold that as my date. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's beautiful. But I'm talking too much. Talk. No, I love that. <laughs> Actually, I had an apparition, and I was able to take a photograph of a manifestation of a cloud angel that in one hand held platinum and the other gold. Now, this picture of this angel is actually on my website, and that's uh, www.awakentowellnessnm.com. And if you go to, I believe it might be the... Um, special events page or what, somewhere in their announcements or special events, it will have that picture. It's on the right hand corner of the page and then it will have the dialogue that came to me thereafter after seeing that image and it was all about the crystalline grid, the information of the thousand years of peace and also, you know, the information that was being expressed at the time by Jose Agrelos, who we lost this past year, but, uh, and his impact in starting the harmonic convergence and his information originally on the crystalline grid. It's all benevolent. Always. So let's get back to your story. Along the way, you became an ordained minister, a life coach, and you do radio. How do we do all this? How do we do all this? How do you get wow. there? Wow, how did we get there? Well, I w as I said earlier, I had a beautiful teacher, spiritual growth teacher, uh, who really helped me actually, in my reality, manifest a close and personal relationship with the person who I know to be uh, Maitreya, who I know to be um, Jesus incarnate. And from that growth experience, there was something I always felt a calling to be uh, ordained and I was working I had studied with this person for 12 years and then this person had some life changes that that led them to another state so consequently just prior to where I was working towards the ministerial ordination ended it concluded and uh, at that time I had people who were asking me about doing weddings and stuff and so I agreed to do those and illumination ceremonies, which are sort of like baptismals, but I called them illumination ceremonies. And um, so I did the the online universal, I don't remember what it's called now, universal ministries or yeah, some such I know thing what like that. Yeah. So I did that for the time factor of doing some other things that were asked of me. And then I really wanted to have, other than the welcome home ministries and um, the Church of the Star of Bethlehem, I wanted to have an ordination. I wanted to have a, a real affiliation because some of those connections had been, as you said, the path just ends. So I found a new teacher named Yananda who lived in Sedona. He had Church of the Golden Age in Sedona. And uh, we became very close and he be definitely became a teacher for me. And I was just starting to work into that ministerial program and he passed. So I recognized maybe it's just about allowing me to express myself with what I have and not getting tied up and hooked up with, it has to look this way, it has to feel this way, it has to have all these other credentials behind it so people take me for being real. And the truth and the realness is me. It exactly. isn't the affiliation. So once I was able to accept that, I just moved forward and, and everything began in a different path just for me. I focused on my own within, kept the studying through many teachers. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's, I was ordained, there was an organization here in Santa Fe called the, um, oh God, my brain just went dead. Uh, the Minnesota, no, that was something, you know, what is it? the New Mexico Theological Seminary. Oh, okay. And their basic belief is, which is, was, I, I resonated with, was how is anybody in human form capable and worthy of judging somebody's connection to the divine? Wow. You know, so they basically just, I did, and that's what I do when I ordain people now, the same thing they did for me, I write, I had to write a little, it was up to me how little, how big. It was a light, you know, my, my spiritual journey. 
why am I wanting to become a minister? What's pointing me? What's guiding me there? And not that they right. were going to judge it. I think what I got out of it, what I asked my people when I ordained them to do, is to see the synchronicity of the divine in their life. Exactly. Because what I have found, as in the study of theosophy, I'll pass lead to one. I mean, they're, they're, the people, the human beingness of people have muddied the lesson and muddied the information with their own stuff. But basically, if you look at you the not? core yeah. of the information, whoever, you know, there's so many Bibles out there and so many philosophies. I have friends who are Muslim. I have friends, uh, you know, Buddhist, Hinduism. My grandmother practiced, my paternal grandmother practiced in her lifetime, she was Episcopalian, Judaism, Hinduism, Sufism, Buddhism, uh, and at the time of her transition, she was embracing Mahikari. So if you read all of those texts, I'll pass lead to one. Yeah. It's, it's all the same. It's everybody who chooses to find an, uh, an energy of a frequency of some word or verbiage and create a, and a whole other scenario with it. Are you familiar with the, the parable of the six blind men and the elephant? I'm not. <laughs> six blind men are walking down the road and they run into an elephant. And so they all want to find out what an elephant is. They've never seen one before, they've heard about it. So they all gravitate to different parts. So one blind man winds up with the trunk and is rubbing the trunk. Another blind man winds up with a tusk and is rubbing the tusk. Third one is holding on to the ear. Fourth one is rubbing the body, to, you know, the base of the body. The other one has the, a leg. Another one has the tail. So they, they all rubbing their own part there. And the elephant finally like, okay, I've had enough, and walks away. And then they get into this huge fight about what really is an elephant. Uh, you know, which is the parable right. of all the different religions. We're arguing about the same thing. We've had one little connection to it, and we think we know it all. Right. Yeah, right. and you're right. I mean, there's there's so much literature out there, um, you know, comparative religions that really get into the similarities. Aldous Huxley wrote a book called The Perennial Philosophy, looking at the seven um, major points that each relig all religions teach the same seven things. Right, they do. Yeah, they and do. And if you if you really focus in on what what makes a difference, what do we need to as a society now really focus on? Well, the first and foremost thing, in my opinion, would be love. Because it is through divine love, and the more you send divine love to everything, then is when you have everything that will change because of divine love. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not arguing with that. I'm trying to, you know, basically, God is love. Absolute that and used, complete. That, that used to be my mantra for quite a while I, when I was meditating, God is love. But I, it was Emanuel Swedenborg who would always say, you don't need love, you are love. You know, right. I, we don't get that message. We, well, we don't embrace it and allow that to come yeah, through. Exactly. Again, we muddy the water, we muddy our own essence of being. And once we put all that away and recognize it is that simple, everything flows so much more gently. So let's go backwards again. You, <laughs> you went from, a, you became an all-day minister, and you're also a life coach. What is that and how does that happen? Uh, life coaching, I turned to the information on life coaching and studied those techniques um, because I, I always had an appreciation for counseling. But I didn't want to go through the whole rigmarole of counseling. One of the things I have found in my life, good counselors and bad counselors. And one of the things that was always the most frustrating was the counselors who you go in to talk to them and all they do is listen. They give you no skills, no solutions. They just listen and nod their head and then you see them again next week. Um, when I went to a recovery program, I was not... Um, in an addiction, in an act of addiction per se, as in drugs or alcohol, but I 
was recovering from a very, very bad marriage. So I went to the 12-step program for dysfunctional families and it had a group therapy context to it. And I really loved that it was introducing skills and solutions. It was all about skills and solutions. So when I looked at life coaching and recognized that really is the formula, the formula to any good life coach is recognize what are the skills this person needs to develop in their life to help create positive solutions in their life. So when you make it quick and simple and precise, it's like aha moments that are big and expansive instantly instead of a six month, seven month, 10 month, one year, you know, drag out of, and when I was a child and somebody hurt my feelings and blah, blah, blah. Not that that's not real, it is real. But we wanna cut to the chase and how can I make my life better tomorrow? Well, today I need to think about it differently. And I need to recognize the skills I need to introduce today to my life to make it different tomorrow is this. Because that creates a solution. So I can wake up tomorrow and say, oh, you know, I don't need to let that bother me anymore. I mean, that, that was then, this is now. I now can look at it and say, you know, that isn't necessarily my stuff. That could be just stuff from whatever. And I can walk around it and go on my path. I don't need to keep working through something or talking about something. I mean, it is what it is, and it is what it is not. And now I gotta go and make, make a new path, make a new journey for the day, have a new adventure for the day. And the new adventure includes blog radio. What is that and how did you get there? I have a, a wonderful co-host, Nathan Main, who has Spirit Transformation. Nathan and I have been friends for a couple of years, and uh, we have had other friends in our spiritual community who have started blog talk radio programs. And so it just became something that we visited about and decided, you know, this would be a wonderful way to be of service. And uh, we have had, if I may share with you quickly, um, just in the, the few months that we've been on the air, we've had Judith Avalon, who's written Entering into the Heart of Mother. In fact, Judith Avalon is soon to be moving to Santa Fe if she's not moved in already from North Carolina. We had uh, Dr. Devan, Holy Divine Healing. He has come to Santa Fe. Are you familiar with Dr. Dan Matthews? I don't think so, no. He's been hosted here. He comes here every year. He does Santa Fe, Hamas, and Albuquerque. Um, we had Diana Peterson. She's in Silver City. She is a trans medium, and she channels a group of beings. It's not a being. It's a group, and the collective of the group is called Amog. Okay. And so we actually did a YouTube. We're getting the YouTube ready to, to be aired but we actually did a live broadcast with her at the house and with a group of people there. That was very exciting and very powerful. We've had Tony Burroughs with the Intenders for the Highest Good. Are you familiar with Tony Burroughs' work? Nope, I live in a cultural <laughs> void. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony Burroughs is quite well known in Albuquerque because a lot of his Intenders program started in the Corrales area. So there's a lot of people who are aware of him. He's from Hawaii, lived in, well, he lived in Hawaii, lived in California, went to Corrales and really got the legs going on this Intenders for the Highest Good. And you can look on, the, on uh, just, you know, Google Intenders and you'll get more information on Tony Burroughs and the books he's producing now. But we had him on, on the air a couple weeks back. We've had Janet Saylor. Do you know Janet Saylor with ASPE? She's from Taos, and she nope. has um, the Association of Science and Paranormal Experiences. And so she puts on a yearly symposia, and uh, she's, she's been fabulous. We've had Nancy Eubel, who's an ARE-affiliated person. In fact, Nancy Eubel was once the um, president of ARE, or an executive director. I, I could have the title incorrect. Yeah. But she was a heavy hitter with ARE, Association for Research and Enlightenment, Edgar Casey, And she is a book that she's uh, promoting now called Mind Walking. In fact, I had a past life regression for just, just a moment of time with her on the air. This was right around the first week of November. If anyone wants to go to Blog Talk Radio, Divine Intuitive Solutions, uh, you can look at the archives and look at the one with Nancy Eubel and you can hear the live work that she did with me. And I've had a multitude of breakthroughs with just that small 
bit of help that was on the radio. We've also had Peter Woodbury. He's from the ARE as well. He was just in town. Yes, he in was. Albuquerque, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, didn't go. I was able to introduce him for that conference that he presented. And Mary M. Bell, who is a nutrition expert out of Houston, Texas, and um, she gave us a lot of really healthy tips for the holidays and Thanksgiving, that kind of thing. So, so people want to hear your show. How do they find you on the Internet? Blog Talk Radio, Divine Intuitive Solutions. That's one, dot com. Yeah. So you can just are you go in your to own station? Are you put... part of a regular internet station? It is the internet. Yeah. It is all on the internet. But I mean, is there other other shows are the host on that same channel? Or is this just no? That's two, just us. Just it's Thursday you. evenings. Uh, Mountain Standard Time is from six to eight p.m. every Thursday evening. It's a two-hour program. Wonderful. And it's broadcast live or it's recorded or both? Broadcast live, but there are archives so people can go to the archives and listen to it. All of these people who I've just mentioned, you can go to the archives and listen to the programs that we hosted them. Are these programs interactive? Can people call in and talk to you? Or? Absolutely. Absolutely. We welcome the call-ins. Absolutely. Um, I don't have the number with me right now, but if they go to Blog Talk Radio and Divine Intuitive Solutions, they'll see the call-in number for the next show. Or if they are viewing it live uh, or listening to it live, it'll have the number to call in. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, so we introduced you as a holistic health practitioner. Yes. The English language is very imprecise. How would you define holistic, and how is it different than other health practitioners? Well, I'll define it this way. Allopathic medicine is the traditional, um, traditional medicine. When you go to a doctor, you tell them you have a symptom. They, they do a very combative uh, reaction where, oh, you have this symptom. Well, here are these drugs for that symptom. Unfortunately, those drugs have a multitude of other things that they can create for your body. There's a disharmony there. Now, I want to say this. I do think traditional medicine can be very effective, very important for specific illnesses. I don't disregard allopathic medicine by any stretch of the imagination. I just think that if you have or are suffering from any type of illness, you should inclusive with that, take a look at a holistic remedy to create more balance. From a holistic perspective, we're going to look at the mind, the body, and the spirit to find out what's creating the disharmony in the first place and then find the solution from that because it could be a cellular memory. It could be a past life issue. Now, get, getting in the woo-woo out of the way, let's say you have uh, diabetes type 2 is extraordinarily prevalent. If you go to an allopathic physician, a uh, modern doctor is going to tell you these are the medications and this is the treatment to manage this illness. If you're going to come to me, I'm not about managing the illness. I'm about correcting the body so the system works more effectively and, and we can be done with it. And I've had very positive, effective work with several people who have had um, real issues with their type 2 diabetes, including foot ulcerations and, you know, near near the point of needing amputation, um, can you, dry gangrene. Can you walk people through the, the healing process for, for type 2? Absolutely. First, we want to take a look at, at diet. We want to take a look at um, history, uh, philosophy, what are they doing, what do they need to do. The main thing going on here is your lymphatic system isn't working appropriately, so we've got to do the massage and get the lymph system flowing again. A lot of um, issues have to do with circulation. We've got to get the circulation going again. We have to recognize what is creating the hiccup. A lot of times it truly is diet. And there really are a multitude of supplements that are helpful as well as the lymphatic massage, as well as um, paying attention to the circulation, circulatory issues can be very, very corrective. It can really be helpful. 
that's just a part of it. I mean, for more information, please contact me at awakenedwellnessnm.com, and I can, you know, each person is individual, and they will have their individual needs addressed. What is, how do you d determine what modality you're going to work in when somebody presents to you? That's a really great question. Thank you so much for asking it because the truth is that uh, I am a medical empath. I am a medical intuitive. And it usually requires me touching somebody and then I'll just start tuning in to what all has to get done. If, you know, do I need to start introducing right here today essential oils? Uh, brew a tea, do so, you know, I can instantly tell. In my Reiki, um, I do harmonic crystal Reiki, so I do work with, with the toning frequencies of tuning forks to get the cellular level in harmony. Change the vibration. Change that frequency of vibration, working with the crystals to help enhance and hold that as I'm adjusting and correcting it, and then the Reiki for the energy. And the body is so intelligent, it really wants to heal itself. It wants to be, it profoundly wants wellness. That's the um, Dr. Herbert Benson. Um, he wrote numerous books. And his basic conclusion was it, he didn't like the concept of, called the placebo effect. Correct. He called it remembered wellness. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. And, that, and, and we have such an intelligent creation of our physical being that it really will go there. It will go there. Given the right attention, it will it will take to that natural progression of, of healing itself. Uh, people who it's like have Like we said cancer, earlier, it's about getting the stuff out of the way. It's, we don't have to return to something. We have to get rid of the blocks that are getting that are stopping us from getting there. We and sometimes it. it might require herbs, tinctures, poultices, essential oils, uh, frequency of of tuning forks. Um, it might require some things that seem a little far out there, but the thing is, they're effective, and they work. And I have people who can say they're effective, and they work, and they will work. I know they do. We're starting to run out of time. Ah, and it's been so much fun. I know there's a couple of announcements you want to make, and there's a couple of announcements I need to make, and then we can get back and talk a little bit more about healing. I do. I want to make one announcement. I just, um, the Octa, the Orion Mayan Labyrinth activation, I don't know if any of these cameras can tune into that. It's going to be December the 10th. This is uh, up on the Belen Mesa. We need approximately 150 people to activate this frequency. Um, did you get that? Did it, did it get the, the labyrinth? And um, for more information, contact earthwalker999 at gmail.com or Debbie at 414-530-1361. I also wanted to make mention of something that was extraordinarily um, magnificent for me. I feel so humbled and honored to have had His Holiness as a guest in my home a week or so ago. He was doing his tour, and his tour is called the Tour of Joy. He's from Bhutan. It's His Holiness Naguan Tenzin Rinpoche. And uh, he's with the Druk, affiliated with the Druk Pamela Center in Colorado. And they, I'd host monthly love-ins at my home, trying to send love out to our universe and our world and for effective change. And they heard about what I do when they were doing their tour in Mount Shasta. Someone who had been to my home and attended one of my leavens told them, well, on your way to Santa Fe, where he was doing a workshop, stop and see Diane Camillo in Albuquerque. And they did. We had 15 people who attended. And His Holiness offered a workshop on the teaching of love and compassion. And it was absolutely joyful. It was truly the tour of joy tour. It was a <laughs> joyful experience. Wonderful. Thank you. I got a couple of announcements. One, uh, my usual announcement, those of you who have been watching this show, you hear this every week. You're watching public access television. It means you are the public. We're here for you. You're not here for us. So 
Love to hear from you. Comments, criticisms, shows you'd like to see done, subjects you'd like to see covered. Maybe you got a show you want to do. Contact me. My information has been on and will be at the end, <coughs> excuse me, uh, rolling at the closing credits. Love to hear from you. Um, besides being a minister and doing this TV show thing, I am also a counselor. I have a state license that I don't do much with, but I am a state licensed counselor, and I do what I call spiritual counseling. Uh, my tagline is, without a spiritual component, there is no healing. So if you're interested in what I do, how I do it, and I'm not here to convert anybody. My ministry is not congregational. I'm not here to put bodies in seats or you know hands in the collection basket or any of that kind of good stuff. I'm just here to help people heal. That's my job. Um, any problems, I don't care what they are. Spirit heals everything because we are spirit at our core, at our being. Money is tight, don't worry about it. I would work on a donation basis. God takes care of me, you don't have to. Sometimes it'll come through you, sometimes it'll come through somebody else. It always comes. So. Don't let money become an issue if there's problems going on in your life. You're coming up on the holidays, you know, you can't deal with the family or after the family is gone, oh my God, help. You know, that's not uncommon. We'll be happy to work with you. Um, next week, my guest is Ross Bishop. He is a shaman and we're going to talk about what it is a shaman and how we use that to heal. Um, Unity Santa Fe, our good friends up on the bypass, will have Gary Renard, who is a noted teacher of A Course of Miracles. He'll be doing a workshop to be held, and I think this is, dates are a little bit off. I, you ought to call them. They gave me dates, and I've seen different dates. So he's going to be there. It's, there is res, a registration, and there is a fee, which we can't talk about. So call them. It's 505-983-4433. Or it's www.unitysantafe.org, and that's Gary Renard. He's a fascinating individual. You don't want to miss this workshop if you're anywhere connected to the Course of Miracles or you're interested in that. So we've got about five or six minutes left. I want to talk about healing. Healing has always been a fascinating subject for me, um, particularly Reiki because that's, that's the modality I work with. How much does the person you are working on have to be invested in the healing for the healing to work? That's a beautiful question, and, and I don't know if I have the perfect answer because I feel, for the most part, my opinion is that they don't have to believe in it. They just need to allow it. But in order to allow it, they have to believe in something. So I've had people who were absolute naysayers and said, well, whatever. Uh, I've had people in my own family who've said, well, if it makes you feel better, you know, go ahead. And uh, so I'll, I'll do treatment on them. And then they find that, you know, gee, that did make a change. That is kind of cool. Let's do that again. And then I have people who absolutely, at the beginning of their healing session, I say, are you now ready to accept your healing? And they say, absolutely. And it isn't me. It is the divine source. And once they're open and willing to accept that divine flow of energy in them, miracles, absolute miracles. It's beautiful. Let's talk about miracles for a second. Do you find that people need repeated treatment? On occasion, absolutely I do. It depends on their situation. And again, each person is unique and different. It depends on, on how serious their ailment might be. Because that was the thing at the beginning when I first started doing Reiki, I could not understand. And, and it wasn't even so much about ego, because I knew if, I had, if it was about ego, I wouldn't be doing the Reiki. Right, right. But it was that, that basic understanding. If Jesus could lay hands and you were cured, why were people coming back repeatedly? You know, and I was questioning whether it was their desire to be healed. Right. Was I interfering with the flow of the energy? Yeah, and there were a lot of things that just, I, it was in that period of time where I was just questioning a lot of things. You know, and, sure. And never really got an answer. I mean, one of my teachers basically said, 
it's not up to you, Phil. It's up to God. Right. Let it go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, for my diabetic clients, I probably see them mo most regularly until we get their um, AC1 levels normal. And it, those who choose to get off of their insulin and are able to, when everything medically is proven that they're able to, I see them fairly regular. I have some people who have chronic pain, so I'll see them maybe, oh, once a week for two or three weeks, and then after that, only once a month if they want maintenance. Um, some people I only see maybe once or twice every six months, um, and they just, like what they say, they're coming in for a tune-up, and we go yeah. from that. And I want to add something that I neglected to mention earlier. This January, I'm opening up a co-op. It will be the Awaken to Wellness Center for Holistic Health Services at 1704 Moon, Northeast in Albuquerque. That's near Indian School in Moon. I have four um, other practitioners who are joining me. And uh, so it'll, we'll have reflexology, massage, EFT, emotional freedom technique, the tapping, uh -huh. uh, the Reiki, all of that, ear candling, you name it. So for those of you who have any curiosity, it's a beautiful website that Diane has. Thank you. It's been flashing on the screen. If you need it, you haven't caught it, contact me. I'll be happy to share it with you. List all these different services, talks about what they are and how they work. That was the intent of this show. We, like Thank I said you. to you in that email, it takes on a life of its it own. It does, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. That's the best way. That's the way it works. So give you a minute, parting thought. Uh, parting thought. Well, I want to add my phone number, 505-990-3881 is my voicemail. Parting thought. Everybody out there, we all have different uh, triggers in our life. Some people, I also am a spiritual intuitive. I do readings, and I've had about 25 readings the last three or four days. And those people who are calling me for their readings, there's, there is um, fear with the holidays and the disgruntled issues of dealing with family, and that's, it saddens me greatly. And I, I have one solution that hopefully many people can tap into and use that successfully, and that is whenever you feel resistance, fear, anger, whatever the emotion might be, Send love to it. Send love to that person. Send love to the situation. Send love to it in advance. Do a little visioning of already imagining it. Perfect, whole, and complete, and it will be. Thank you and so thank much. thank you. I've enjoyed this so much. Likewise. It was wonderful to meet you. Likewise. Thank you. I want to thank you all for tuning in. We are here every week. The message is the same. The modality always changes. You are one with spirit, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Use it. You can heal from it. You can change your life from it. You can create beyond your wildest imagination once you allow it to. So until next week, walk in love and light and blessings to you all. I'm Reverend Phil, and I've been your host for Words of the Prophets. Thank you for tuning in. Please join me again next week, same time, same channel, for more Words of the Prophets.